This is the ICSC Chemistry Science Paper 2 of ICSC Examination 2023. This is the board examination paper. Maximum marks are 80 marks and we are today going to see the answer key to section B. Now as you know section A is of 40 marks and section B will be made of Uh, section B is again 40 marks and this will be from question 3 to 8. There are 6 questions and we have to answer any 4 questions from this section. So let us look at the answer key and the solutions of question 3 onwards. Of course, I will be solving all of them but for the exam you have to take any 4 questions from here. Let us look at question number 3, the first part says identify the cation in each of the following cases. Ammonium hydroxide solution when added to solution B gives a white precipitate which does not dissolve in excess of ammonium hydroxide solution. Now we know that white PPT which dissolves is zinc but the other white PPT which will not dissolve is the hydroxide of PB. So if I have PbOH twice, it is not going to dissolve in ammonium hydroxide. Now the cation will be Pb because with ammonium hydroxide drop wise, it will give us the lead hydroxide. So the cation here is lead and write into bracket Pb2 plus. That should give you your full marks. Sodium hydroxide is added to solution C and it gives a white precipitate which is insoluble in excess of sodium hydroxide solution. White PPT which is insoluble is going to be Ca2 plus. It gives milky white precipitate which is insoluble in excess of sodium hydroxide. Okay, so it can be Ca2 plus, it could be even Mg2 plus. Mg2 plus gives dull white precipitate. But otherwise, Zn, Pb, Al, these ones will give us soluble in excess of sodium hydroxide. So you can write calcium 2 plus and of course prior to that you can write your calcium. Calcium 2 plus you can write. Here also you can write 2 plus. Let us look at our second one. Fill in the blanks by choosing the correct answer from the brackets. During electrolysis, the compound dash in its molten state liberates a reddish brown fumes at anode. Reddish brown fumes means it will have to be Br2 vapors. So which one has bromide as the negative radical? This one. So it will be PbBr2. B. The ion which could be discharged most readily during the electrolysis is the one which is lower in the EC series. Copper is much below iron 2 plus, so it will be your Cu2 plus. Let's come to the third part. Arrange the following as per the instruction in the given bracket. So we have Al, K, Mg, C in decreasing order of reactivity. So we will write the activity series here. We have K, then Ca, then Mg. And then Al. This will be the decreasing order of reactivity because right on top will be most active. As we go down, they will be least reactive. So decreasing order will be K, then Ca, then Mg, and then Al. N, B, E, O, C. Increasing order of the non-metallic character. Increasing order means it will have to be along the periodic table from left to right. Here we'll have metallic and here we'll have non-metallic character from left to right we go. So from left to right it will be increasing non-metallic character. It will be BE first, then we have C, then N, then O. Okay, so you have to know the order by heart. You must be having some mnemonics also. So use your mnemonics and get the order. P, S, I, F and BE. Decreasing order of the valence electrons which means you have to come this way because from left to right the valence electrons increase 
so here this side they will be maximum and here they will be minimum decreasing order will go from maximum to minimum we'll have to go from f which is group 7 a or 17 then it will be p which is group 5 a or 15 then si will be group 4 a or 14 and then we will have the last one b so decreasing order this will have seven valence electrons this will be five four and then two let us come to the fourth sub part complete and balance the following equations now here it will be double decomposition reaction so ca will become cacl2 so we'll write here two to balance this reaction now two nh4oh means 2h2o plus 2nh3 up arrow let us come to b this will be cu will take oh so we'll write here 2 and we will get cu oh twice plus nh4 twice so4 now here of course for this reaction if this is a drop wise then it will be this reaction and this is going to be a precipitate but in excess we are going to get tetraamine copper 2 sulfate then we have copper and conch hno3 so we'll have copper with four molecules of conch hno3 will give us cuno3 twice plus 2 h2o plus 2 no2 and that is a balanced reaction here that finishes our question 3 so first 10 marks are done let us come to question number 4 the first one state a relevant reason for the following a hydrogen chloride gas cannot be dried over quicklime so here let us write our answer hydrogen chloride reacts with quicklime being basic in nature hence although quicklime is hygroscopic which means it will absorb moisture it cannot be used to dry hydrogen chloride gas so this is our answer a b ammonia gas is not collected over water so we write ammonia is highly soluble in water into bracket 702 volumes dissolve in one volume of water hence it cannot be collected over water let us come to second part of question 4 identify the alloy in each case from the given composition aluminium magnesium manganese and copper isn't this the composition of duralmin iron nickel chromium and carbon this is stainless steel let us come to the third one solve the following numerical problem ethane burns in oxygen according to the chemical equation and they have given this equation they are telling you 80 ml of ethane burns with 300 ml of oxygen find the composition of the resultant gaseous mixture when measured at room temperature for something like this we have to first write this reaction and then on top of this we will write here 80 ml and this ethane is burnt in 300 ml of oxygen so this is our 300 ml of oxygen they are asking us what is the resultant composition at room temperature so at room temperature this is going to be water so here it's going to be not applicable whatever it is six volumes it will be so this will be not applicable remember that so according to gay lussac's law since all of them are gaseous we have to say two volumes of ethane is to seven volumes of oxygen gives four volumes of co2 and this will be not applicable and this is because of gay lussac's law you can write the full form over here i'm just writing like so now look at this if two volumes are 80 then one volumes become 40 and seven volumes become 280 but if you take seven volumes as 300 then two volumes will be more than 80 so this is the controlling factor remember that so for your thinking you can say two volume corresponds to 80 ml 
so one volume will correspond to 40 ml okay so below this you are going to write 2 into 40 ml is to 7 into 40 ml gives us 4 into 40 ml of co2 and this will be here dash because not applicable at room temperature this is going to be water so it won't be a gas which is the gas that is formed over here we will have volume of co2 formed is going to be 4 into 40 which is 160 ml and the volume of oxygen used is going to be 7 into 40 you see this which is 280 ml so out of 300 280 ml is used up so volume of unused oxygen is going to be 300 minus 280 which is 20 ml you're with me hmm? in the resultant mixture now remember this ethane was 80 ml all 80 has got used up here but from 300 of oxygen 280 has got used up plus we have this co2 that is formed 160 and this is water so it's not gaseous mixture so you will say therefore the resultant mixture has number one volume of unused oxygen which will be we have already written here it is 20 ml and number two is volume of co2 form and that is here we've written 160 ml therefore total volume is going to be 160 plus 20 which is 180 ml we write this individually and we will write this together also and that is our answer the fourth sub part of question 4 the following questions are pertaining to the laboratory preparation of ammonia gas from magnesium nitride write the balanced chemical equation so magnesium nitride is mg3n2 you have to remember this formula and plus it will be 6 h2o which is warm water and that gives us 3 mgoh twice now see from here there are 6 h's and 6 oh's so 6 oh's are here now 6 h's are remaining which will go with this so that will be 2 nh3 why is this method seldom used so here the reason is since the nitrides are expensive how do you identify the gas now ammonia gas we have to bring glass rod dipped in conch hcl so identification is when a glass rod dipped in conch hcl is brought near ammonia gas dense white fumes of nh4cl are formed so that finishes our fourth question so third and fourth questions 20 marks we finished question number five write one use of the following alloys now for bronze and the fused metal you can take these directly from the textbook it's a learning type question question five part two draw electron dot structure of the following first one is ammonium ion ammonia as you know is single bond H with nitrogen here like so it's NH3 and it has the lone pair of electrons so when it has a hydrogen ion in proximity that hydrogen ion needs two electrons and ammonia has this lone pair which will be given to this H so how does it look like in single bond H single bond H single bond H and this will be given to this H1 plus and now it will become 
n single bond h single bond h single bond h and coordinate covalent bond with this h now it is a complete structure like so with one plus charge here and that becomes your ammonium ion okay then we have the molecule of nitrogen molecule of nitrogen is going to be your n remember n is 7 so the electronic configuration is 2 comma 5 so nitrogen will have three electrons here and two electrons here so plus another nitrogen which will also have three electrons here and the two here so these are five electrons in the outermost now these are going to be shared between the two nitrogens in order to complete the octet nitrogen needs three more electrons as well as this nitrogen needs three more electrons to complete its stable electronic configuration that results in n triple bond n which becomes n2 and that is the molecule of nitrogen with a triple covalent bond third one give the balanced chemical equation for the following conversions with conditions ethene from ethanol this is a very very popular reaction for all examination what is ethanol it is c single bond c with h and oh here from this we have to remove this h oh means h2o so we need a dehydrating agent like concentrated sulfuric acid at 170 degrees C and that will remove this H2O and so it becomes C double bond C and plus H2O. So we have got ethene from this is ethanol. This is your reaction A. Now B reaction ethane from calcium carbide. Calcium carbide reaction is you have calcium with C triple bond C like this and plus we will have HOH that is H2O and HOH and that will give us this which is ethane. So it will be C triple bond C with H and H and plus CA will take these two OHs and it will become CAOH twice. Your C reaction monochloromethane from methane so i have methane which is ch4 and plus i will take chlorine that is cl2 and here we will say uv light diffuse sunlight or heat now one of the ages from here will be replaced by cl so we will have ch3 cl plus that h will go with the other cl producing hcl okay let us come to the fourth sub part. Study the following observations and name the anions present in each reaction. When a crystalline solid P is warmed with concentrated H2SO4 and copper turnings, a reddish brown gas is released. That is possible only when this is NO2 gas is released, which means the anion is nitrate, that is NO3. 1 minus b when few drops of dilute sulfuric acid is added to salt r and heated a colorless gas is released which turns moist lead acetate paper silvery black now this is the test for h2s gas hydrogen sulfide so r must be having sulfide so for r the anion is sulfide which is s2 minus then we come to c when few drops of barium nitrate solution is added to the salt solution q white precipitate is formed which is insoluble in hcl now barium nitrate and barium chloride are used for detection of sulfate and sulfide radicals so if your barium sulfate is formed it is white precipitate insoluble so sulfate means it will be SO4 2 minus. This is the answer for C. Question number 6. First one. Define austate. 
A. Electronegativity and B. K. Lussac's law of combining volumes. All of you know the definitions and the statement for K. Lussac's law electronegativity. We write the definition it is the amount of energy released when an atom in the gaseous state accepts an electron to form an anion. These are the keywords. Let us look at Gay Lussac's law. When gases combine, they do so in volumes which bear simple whole number ratio to one another and to the volumes of products if gaseous provided the temperature and pressure of the reacting gases and their products remain constant. Empirical formula of the organic compound is CHCl2. If the relative molecular mass is 168, what is the molecular formula and we have been given the atomic weights. Now from empirical formula, first step is to find empirical formula weight. So we will write empirical formula weight will be equal to 4 C will write 12, 4 H will write 1 and for this Cl2 we will write 2 into 35.5. See the weights are given over here, the atomic weights. So we will just use that. So this will become 13 plus 71 and that will give us 84. That is the empirical formula weight. Now, RMM has already been given, that is the molecular weight. So, your N will be equal to molecular weight upon the empirical formula weight. Molecular weight is 168. Empirical formula weight is here, that is 84. So, that will become 84 twos. So, N is equal to 2. Now, we want the molecular formula. So, molecular formula is going to be equal to N into empirical formula. So, that will give us 2 into CHCl2. That will give us C2H2Cl4 and this is our answer. Okay, so can you see how easy it was to get those two marks? So, question 6, third subpart, choose the substances given in the box below to answer the following questions and we are given iron, lead, magnesium sulphide, ferric chloride, zinc, copper, sodium sulphide and ferrous sulphate. From here we will have to pick out these. What is A? The metal that will not produce hydrogen gas when react with dilute acids. Now if it is not going to produce hydrogen gas which means either it is below hydrogen in the electrochemical series or activity series or it will be lead because with lead lead that is pb plus hcl it will not give h2 because pbcl2 will form insoluble coating and the reaction will stop with sulfuric acid it will form lead sulfate again the same thing will happen so which is the metal the answer is lead for your answer a b says the compound that will produce sulfur dioxide when reacted with dilute HCl. With the dilute acid, sulfur dioxide will be formed from a sulfite. Where is sulfite? Here. This will give H2S. This will give SO2. Okay. So, here it is for B. It is magnesium sulfite. Let us come to C. The solution of this compound produces dirty green precipitate with NaOH. Now, dirty green precipitate becomes Fe2+. So, if I have Fe2+, I must have the compound with Fe2+, that is ferrous sulphate. Can you see that? So, we will write ferrous sulphate. Now, you will say that, oh, there was even iron over there. There was even ferric over there. But this ferric would have produced FeOH thrice that would not be dirty green that would be reddish brown. And if it is iron, iron will not react with alkali, iron will react only with acid. Okay, so I cannot take this, I cannot take this. Let us come to question 6, fourth subpart, state one relevant observation from each of the following. A says to copper nitrate solution. So we know copper nitrate is going to be blue in color because of this copper. Initially few drops of sodium hydroxide solution. So we will get copper 
hydroxide by double decomposition reaction and then in excess now copper hydroxide is pale blue precipitate and with NaOH it is insoluble in excess so we write just that we have written pale blue precipitate of copper hydroxide is formed which is insoluble in excess of NaOH solution let us come to B burning of ammonia in excess of oxygen for this it is going to be ammonia burns with greenish yellow flame C dry ammonia gas is passed over heated PBO now we know that PBO is going to get reduced to PB because ammonia is a reducing agent so it's going to reduce PBO so PBO becomes PB so PBO color is buff yellow and PB is gray so let us write buff yellow PBO turns to gray lead metal you can even say instead of turns is reduced to so we finish question number six we have finished now three four five six so we have actually finished four questions in section b now we have two more questions if you have omitted any one of these in the choice questions then let us look at our question seven and eight question seven name the following a organic compounds with same molecular formula but different structural formula are isomers b a group of organic compounds where the successive members follow a regular structural pattern successive compounds differ by ch2 group and that is homologous series now these ones are all definitions all you had to write which term is involved over here okay question 7 second part give reasons for the following ionization potential decreases down the group and ionic compounds do not conduct electricity in solid state let us take it one by one so i have written these answers down the group the number of shells increases this will increase the atomic size so the valence electrons will be loosely bound to the nucleus and can be removed easily that means less energy required so with less energy we write and hence the ionization potential decreases down the group for the ionic compounds b part they have the cation and the anion held together by what a strong electrostatic force of attraction hence the ions will not be free they are held together strongly and therefore they cannot be separated nor can be free so they cannot conduct electricity in solid state but they can conduct electricity in molten or aqueous state when these ions become free the third sub part of question 7 calculate the percentage of phosphorus in the fertilizer superphosphate that is CaH2PO4 twice correct to one decimal point and then we have the empirical formula of C8H18 so our steps are first to find the molecular weight of superphosphate that is CaH2PO4 twice and we write 1 into 40 because calcium has mass as 40 then there are these two of these so i'm writing two into bracket h2 means two atoms into one is the mass atomic atomic weight of hydrogen p will be 1 into 31 o4 will be 4 into 16 okay that will give us 40 here 2 into this is 2 plus 31 plus 16 4 64 that will give us inside the bracket 97 so 40 plus this will be 194 that is 234 is the molecular weight percentage of phosphorus will be mass of phosphorus upon the total mass multiplied by 100 percent write this neatly like so so you will see 2 goes here 117 times now when you have to actually do the division by 117 it goes very simple see here 3100 if you divide by 117 so 72 is 34 and 1 2 is 2 so it will be 234 right so it will go twice 2 point and then you know how to proceed see 117 
is going to be 2 and here 34. 17, 3 is 51. So can you see division is going to be easy because you are not allowed to carry calculators for the exam, right? So this is how you should do. Don't do 62 divided by 234 because to get 234 times multiple will be time consuming. All right. So it comes out to be 26.495, one decimal place. So up to this place, the next digit is 9. So it becomes 5 here. This 4 becomes 5 and our answer is 26.5%. Question 7. Third subpart B, write the empirical formula of this. So we are going to first find C is to H, the ratio as 8 is to 18. Carbon is 8 atoms, hydrogen is 18. 2 goes 4 times, 2 goes 9 times. So we will have C is to H as 4 is to 9 and then we will say therefore empirical formula is going to be C4H9. Were the steps easy? Yes. Let us look at the fourth subpart. Answer the following questions with reference to electro refining of copper. Now even before we look at this, you should have in front of you the electrolytic cell. We will have the cathode and the anode. This one let us say is cathode and this one is anode so copper is going to be impure state at the anode and cathode it will be thin sheet of pure copper if you keep this much in mind what is the anode made of it is the impure copper but what you will also tell is a thick bar why thick bar because from there the pure copper will take part in the reaction and produce Cu2 plus ions in the electrolyte. What do you observe at the cathode? From here, which is copper sulfate or copper salt aqueous solution, copper 2 plus ion will migrate at the cathode and it will become an atom and get deposited here. So what do you observe at the cathode? Pinkish brown copper metal that is in pure form is deposited where at the cathode and what happens to the cathode mass it will increase because this will become fatter right the reaction taking place at the cathode is simple enough co2 plus ions are going to migrate to the cathode and they will accept two electrons each and that will become copper atoms so these are neutral atoms that are formed this is the cathode reaction now we have only the last one question remaining and that is question number 8. Let us look at the first one. Arrange the following according to the instructions given in the brackets. Now these are all organic hydrocarbons here in the increasing order of molecular weight. So let us look at the molecular weight. Now one carbon is going to be the first one. So let us look at CH4. Now CH4 the molecular weight is going to be 12 plus 4 means 16. Let us look at C2H2. C2H2 is going to be 24 plus 2 that is 26 but we have C2H4 also. So C2H4 is going to be 24 plus 4 that is 28. Then C3H6. C3H6. 12 3 36. Carbon is 12 you know that right. 36 plus 6 is 42. So how do we write it in increasing order? CH4, then C2H2, then C2H4 and then C3H6. You could have done this mentally also. Obviously the first one would have been CH4. After that you will take something with eth. Now there are two of them with eth like this. So this one will be the next one after CH4, this will be after this C2H2 and the last one would be where there is C3H6. Okay, now come to B. Cu2 plus Na1 plus Zn2 plus and Ag1 plus. The order of preferential discharge at cathode means you have to start from the lower end of the activity series. Which one will be the lowest out of all these Ag? Just above Ag will be, just above this will be 
not any but and just above that will be in. Now I'm not saying immediately above AG will be CU but you have to go if you know your EC series this way you have to write your EC series the ions in this manner. Okay so this is going to be the preferential discharge in the order of it. All right differentiate between following based on the criteria given below in the brackets cane sugar and hydrated copper sulfate using concentrated H2SO4 and sulfuric acid and hydrochloric acid types of salt formed. Now we'll have to make columns like this whenever there is differentiation remember that. So for A part we had cane sugar and hydrated copper sulfate with conch sulfuric acid added this will be converted into black spongy mass of carbon and also it will have steam given out. But for hydrated copper sulfate, blue hydrated copper sulfate will turn into white amorphous powder of anhydrous copper sulfate. So hydrated is going to become anhydrous. Types of salt formed in sulfuric acid and hydrochloric acid. Now sulfuric acid has two H's in one molecule. Because of that, there will be partial replacement of H atoms by a basic radical. So it can form an acid salt as well as a normal salt when it is total complete replacement of H ions by basic radical. But hydrochloric acid is having only one hydrogen ion per molecule. So it will form only normal salt. Got that? I hope you wrote it right if you have attempted this question. Write in the comment box how many marks you are getting in your section B. Let us look at convert the following reactions into balanced chemical equations. So we are having ammonia to nitric oxide using oxygen and platinum catalyst. We will have ammonia which is NH3 plus O2 with Platinum as the catalyst, the temperature will have to be 700 to 800 degrees C and this ammonia will become NO plus H will become H2O and plus heat. We will need 4 NH3 to give us 4 NO so N is balanced. We have 12 H so 6 H2O to balance H. We have 4 oxygen and 6 oxygen so that is 10 so this will be balanced reaction. Sodium hydroxide to sodium sulfate using sulfuric acid this is simple enough. Sodium hydroxide is NaOH plus sulfuric acid is H2SO4 but remember it will have to be dilute H2SO4 and that will give us Na will take SO4 it will form Na2SO4 so I'll quickly write 2 here to balance Na then 2H and 2OH means 2H2O and that's our reaction. Ferrous sulfide to hydrogen sulfide using hydrochloric acid so FES plus hydrochloric acid is HCl here again we have to write a dilute and if we will take Cl it will form FeCl2 so quickly we will write here to balance Cl. Now 2H and S will give us H2S which is a gas. Everything is balanced H is balanced Cl is balanced on both sides Fe and this is our balanced reaction. So this was our third sub part of question 8. Let us come to the last part of the last question. Choose the answer from the list which fits the description. Now these are the choices which are given. A compound which undergoes thermal dissociation. Thermal dissociation is going to be this because none of these are going to be electrovalent compounds this is going to not go thermal dissociation because strong bond between cation and anion electrovalent compound but for this it will be NH4Cl 
Why? Because it will become NH3 and HCl and back again it can convert into NH4Cl. Okay. So NH4Cl we write the way it is given here. An amphoteric oxide. Amphoteric oxide is ZnAlPb. Can you see Pb here? Here it is. So it will be PbO and the compound which is a non-electrolyte means it will have only molecules means carbon tetrachloride so we will write ccl4 and that finishes our section b so i have already posted section a question 2 and 3 and i have already posted mcqs earlier so that will give the whole of paper solved and the answer key all the questions of your ICAC chemistry. So find out how much you are getting out of 80 and write in the comment if you wish to. It will be nice to know if you got full 80 on 80 or you are getting 79 or 78. Do let me know and also let me know if you want to see any other concept in chemistry to be explained. I will be happy to do so. In the meantime, stay healthy, work hard for your next few papers. There are three papers more remaining and all the best. Bye.